I really didn't think that I would like this one. At first, for me, Planet Crafter sounded like another survival game in early access, but it turns out it's just not that. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Planet Crafter and whether it is worth it to buy in early access or later in the stages, and whether you should actually consider spending money on this game or whether you should just ignore it completely. As always, I'm going to be giving you the answer right away to not waste any more of your time and to just, well, push you in the correct direction if you want. And then we're going to talk about why I think so. So for the question whether Planet Crafter is actually worth it or not, then the answer is yes, absolutely. This game actually really surprised me. And if you like the experiences similar to Subnautica or even Satisfactory, you're gonna enjoy this game quite a lot, even in its earliest stages. And the later you buy this game, most likely more you're gonna enjoy it. So let's just discuss what it is and why it is worth it. By the way, if you don't wanna miss the reviews like this one that I upload all the time, pretty much few times a week now, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's not a huge waste of time for you, but it's a very big thing for me. So hit that subscribe button and thank you for that. So Planet Crafter. So what it even is. Premise wise, Planet Crafter is crafting survival game, but not, not in a traditional sense. So in this game, you are a convict that has been sent on this remote planet to terraform it as, well, punishment. And yes, this game actually has a story which is delivered through a radio transmissions that you can get a bit closer to the beginning of the game. So you land on this completely barren planet. There is no oxygen on the planet. There is technically no atmosphere on the planet. There is no life on the planet. And planet is freezing cold. And you are basically landing on some kind of Mars. And your goal is to make this planet livable. That's just what it is. And you are monitoring the progress of this terraforming through, well, terraforming score. And the terraforming score can be increased by a few different elements. First is increasing of atmospheric pressure. Second is increasing of a temperature. Third is increasing of an oxygen in the atmosphere. And fourth, that you will unlock a bit later in the game, is increasing of a biomass on the planet. So by crafting different machines, you are increasing one, another, or third, or all at once. And for the resources, you are gathering it on a planet because a lot of resources are just scattered on a planet. Literally, when you leave your pod, when you land on a planet, you see everything just scattered around. At first, I thought that it would be a chip trick and thought that this was not a good idea. But as you go through the game, you realize why it's all there. You see, when you start the game and when you start collecting the resources, each resource is, well, one unit of resource. And when you get and collect this resource, it disappears from there. And as you collect the resources, you will start clearing out large portions of the territory, realizing that resources on the planet are actually limited. Except it's not. You see, from time to time, meteor showers will start pouring from the sky and they will start bringing new resources to the planet, basically replenishing the resources. And on the later stages, you actually unlock the mining machines as well. So you kind of like can automate your mining as well. So each different parameter of a terraforming, it's again, it's pressure, oxygen, heat, and biomass has their own blueprint tree. And you have a separate blueprint tree for the terraforming as well. And higher you increase each parameter, you will start unlocking new different recipes. And the planet itself is pretty interesting as well because it's not procedurally generated, it's handcraft map. You can actually choose a starting position from the pre-made ones or you can just choose a random one which just makes the game a bit more difficult because you might spawn on some very weird spot with almost no resources. But this game is not just all fun and easy peasy, it actually has a challenge as well. And challenge is actually staying alive. There are no enemies on a planet, so no one will try to kill you except for the environment itself and except for, well, your own needs. You actually have three different gauges to control. It's your health gauge, which is basically your food gauge, meaning that you need to actually eat food. And on a planet with no resources, it's extremely hard to come by. You actually need to control the water, which you need to craft from an ice that is scattered around and you need to constantly control your oxygen which there is none on the planet only place where you can actually replace replenish your oxygen is well by crafting oxygen canisters or by actually building a spaces where you can actually where where oxygen is automatically replenished so you need to constantly monitor all of those gauges especially oxygen to not die at the moment of the recording i don't think there is a way to create a breathable, breathable atmosphere just yet but it will be added eventually in the game so eventually you won't need to control your oxygen anymore except for going underwater speaking of underwater because the planet is actually entirely frozen when you increase the temperature the permafrost of the planet that is gathered and stored in the caves 
will actually start melting and it will actually start flooding the planet. So you actually need to well account for this when you're building your bases. So you don't want your bases to be on the lake beds because they will get flooded. The planet is also littered with a bunch of different places to visit, like different caves and different weird structures and also the crashed spaceships, which has a lot of resources there as well, which are very useful. Overall, despite game looking very simple in, their, in its manner and very, well, not interesting, it is actually pretty cool. A lot of people are comparing this game to Subnautica and when you start playing this game, after around 20-30 minutes, you will understand why. It's all about this eerie atmosphere that you have while being completely alone on the planet. And when you start actually terraforming the planet, you are visually terraforming the planet. The first thing that you will actually terraform, the first thing that you will actually change is the change of the sky. When you land on a planet, you see the blood red sky above your head. But as you will continue terraforming, it will start changing into the per shade of purple and then into a completely blue sky. And then when the temperature will rise, you're going to see a bunch of lake beds and rivers on the planet and when you reach a certain level you will actually unlock to spread life on the planet and you'll see lush green planet eventually and developers are also planning to add the different types of lives as well like insects and other more advanced types of life which will make the terraformation of the planet even more apparent and with all of this and with all of the things that you can actually do while seeing an actual change on a planet it makes game pretty interesting yes the game has some frustrating elements as well like the constant need of the control of an energy supplies energy supplies and oxygen but it just adds a little bit of challenge to the game even though a lot of things are not realistic like for example an unlimited oxygen in the spaces that you will build or energy resources that are actually connected miraculously to each other no matter where you will put them it's still it's made in a way to make the game fun and not the chore it's not a satisfactory complex even though satisfactory complex is pretty fun it's pretty simple but not in an exchange of fun but what about the more important part what about the price how much the game will actually cost you the game is actually pretty new so it did not have any significant sales except for around like 10 percent sales so for the tier one countries the game is available for around 20 dollars and for tier two countries the game is available for 10 dollars and it's in very early access right now and it will be in early access for around a year as the developers are saying but is this game worth a purchase right now when it's early access and the answer is for this price 10 or even 20 dollars yes absolutely this game is pretty great purchase disclaimer here i got the key for the game for free if this information is important for you I'm saying it right now I got the key for the game for free and maybe if I would just stumble upon the, this game on a steam just out of the blue I will probably not buy this game because I'm not a survival type of gamer but I would be very wrong and if you like the games like Subnautica or Satisfactory or especially if you like uh, survival light games you're gonna enjoy this game a lot well unfortunately I have to say that you have to take my word for it that's just what it is or just watch a gameplay. It's got very high praise on Steam, man. Well, to be fair, it's pretty deserved. For this early in the development, the game is pretty fun to play, even at this stage. And you're gonna get 20 to 30 hours of the gameplay easy, even at this stage. And eventually, the developers are saying that you're gonna get 50, 60 hours of the game easily. And if, especially if you're gonna play on hardcore. Boy, hardcore is different. On hardcore, if you'll die, the game will delete your save file. It's, it's pretty cool, to be fair. Overall, the game is absolutely worth your money and your time, and you should absolutely get it to support an amazing developers because, yeah, it's absolutely worth it. Well, this should be it for today. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you like this type of survival games? And if you do, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.